Hi, Moss here with Sentrance's Mixer Face R4. Actually, I applied for the original, I paid for the original Kickstarter that uh, Michael Goodman set up for the Mixer Face, and after some various dramas, and I wanted specifically the iPhone compatible one, he ended up redesigning it to make the R4, and it worked out quite well, although I had to wait a while. So this is what I'm using actually to record this video as well as my regular videos, and you can just see I've actually got a microphone, uh, two microphones hooked in, professional studio grade microphones from uh, hand built by a company called Mass Kobo in Japan. So uh, if you want to hear the, get an idea of the sound quality, you can. And um, I, I've been waiting to get a bit of microphones to, to record this so you can get an idea. It's a, quite a comprehensive uh, device, and I've had more complex sound cards here before, but I wanted something compact and something maybe I could take with me. And it, it, it has two input, two microphone inputs, and quite a variety of uh, outputs. Now I'm using uh, a Minova, a Lightning to micro USB cable, which I've just put a ferrite on just experimentally. Uh, it doesn't actually come with a ferrite. These are uh, have worked out quite well. They come in very uh, short, short and long lengths, and I use a long length usually for hooking up to my iPhone as as it's sitting here. I'll just move it, and um, I hook that up to uh, um, the microphone arm using a, a small small rig adapter. Actually, this thing is convenient because underneath, I'll adjust it so you can see, it actually has a camera at, um, mount on the bottom, so you can actually screw it into something. A small camera mount and then you can just I just put it on these small rig things and uh, uh, clamp it to whatever whatever I want and that works out really well so if you want to attach it to other gear it's very easy to attach to other gear now um, it's not you know it's not particularly big you can see by the XLR plugs and the, the 3.5 millimeter plugs it's not particularly large so that makes it very portable and I, I gather he, Michael has made an even smaller one which uses one input which you can attach I think directly even to a micro some microphones and uh, use it that way. So functionality wise, well it's fairly straightforward. You have your standard gain, you have uh, I think it's about minus 40 or 45 dB signal indicator, you have a clipping indicator which you probably saw flashing. I've got to hook it up to a second microphone. I've actually got both, unusually I put my iPhone on the second, on the little uh, portable uh, uh, st stand I use, for a little kind of mini camera phone stand with a glyph I use, and I actually have both mics hooked up on an, an uh, on an arm, so this is what I'm using now. Here are two pro microphones, and I'm using the one on the right. This is just a weird setup for me. Usually, on that small rig, I actually have the iPhone mounted on the glyph, so I use for recording close-ups of products I'm reviewing. So that works out really well. Now, gain. We'll start with gain, maximum gain. You might hear some background noise if you have a good quality. If you're listening with headphones, if I turn it up to maximum, it's just a touch below maximum at the moment. Now I can hear through my headphones, this is going to be really loud, I can hear through my headphones like just hear the hum of the drive arrays on my computer, but I usually turn down to attach below to stop it going over. Um, I expect instrument microphones being instruments tend to be a lot, lot louder than someone talking at a, a regular volume or a slight, which I am, that um, instrument mics would work at lower gain, but that's kind of the max gain. It also has... Uh, a high Z options you can see just up here little high Z switches on both which I've got on low at the moment so you can have a you have a bit of adjustability there you have a high pass filter as well these particular mics actually it, of course it, your mileage may vary uh, I have those switched in because these particular mics seem to pick that up you know, low frequencies pretty well and so it picks up hum of kind of machine hum around me when I have computer stuff running the useful thing of course is you can balance the uh, channel versus USB because it's a two-way USB. So that ends up, of course, being very handy. Actually, I tend to use this most often. Uh, when I'm using that, I actually use it for Skype. So I can make a very clear Skype call, or maybe I'll do a podcast with somebody else over Skype, and having good clarity kind of really helps. And being able to, you know, I can hear through, at the moment, my voice very clearly, but I can switch it through to hearing what's going on through a USB and use this as the headphone out. And of course you have the monitor control. Now there are two monitor options, there's of course headphones which I've got plugged in down here. And there are two 3.5mm sockets which correspond to uh, XLR output. So you need a, you need special adapter cables so you can actually adapt, set it, uh, connect it to let's say powered monitors or something like that. Don't know how far I can turn this around. Cables everywhere. I've got to show that you have enough flex on this. You can just see the, th the just a 3.5mm socket there. Yeah, that'd be right. These ones, oh, there we go. I just have them going through the hole in the desk for, to keep it neat. But there's little balanced outputs there. So you just need 3.5mm XLR. 
for that. And they're just labeled one and two rather than left and right because you know it depends on what how you have it set up. Now on the bottom, let's just have a look at the bottom. I can actually disconnect my headphones and no drama there. I have there's a line in. So the other thing you may have seen is there's an auxiliary three slash four port there, so you can actually uh, mix that in as necessary. If you, you could actually daisy chain two of these together and use the line out of one and use the line input of another to make it four channel, and then just have one only use one USB setup. So you could you could do that, and you could have pseudo semi four channel actually end up being kind of three channel mixed. Now of course there's the the phantom power switch just down there you can just see the phantom power switch in there and if i unplug it's not gonna this is disconnected i have this connected to a black magic box so i can have audio options whether i come out through the usb or through the black magic box if i want the um there's some timing issues in my rig when i'm doing video so my voice is out of sync so to get it in sync there i have options there you can also have the monitor can be stereo or mono and of course hearing myself in one ear is kind of a pain so i don't really like that um this i'll just gonna unplug my headphones for a sec which is going to be interesting. Uh, we, of course, the input can be low, have uh, low or high set, which I haven't touched that actually. So, And uh, yeah, what you have your power switch. If I press and hold that long for power on or off, and it has three little indicators for battery there. And of course, micro USB in is separate so that you can use whatever, you know, if I th it comes with a, a basic charger. We can use whatever kind of general source for USB power as you, as you need. And uh, that's the basic setup. Now, in terms of performance, well, it does the job really well. It's, there are two aspects, of course. Um, in terms of recording, well, you can hear me now. I haven't tried it with instruments, so because I don't have anyone to record playing instruments, but I'd like to do that someday. And uh, in terms of recording voice, it seems to be very, there was obviously a big jump up going from a, uh, uh, what is it, a $100 to $200 Rode mic to uh, a shotgun mic up to this, for these hand-built um, microphones. And um, it's very clear, even someone on, like I think he was listening to me on a sound bar said I could, he could hear me much more clearly. So the recording quality is definitely there. The, uh, if you're listening to music, if, you were, were to, if you're a bit of an audiophile as well, the playback quality is not the uh, digital to analog conversion, is okay, sufficient, this is about as far as I'd say. Um, but not, it's not going to be fantastic. It's, you know, it's primary thing is for recording, but it's enough to, to play back music pretty well. And Ascentrons also made a similarly sized uh, audio, you know, uh, the um, M8, which was actually the original M8 was a bit bigger. And I reviewed that years and years ago now. And it was a good quality thing, but, uh, you know, it's, this in comparison is kind of basic. So in terms of usage, it's worked out really well. And, you know, the, the usage is as the functionality expects. Probably the main thing is the gain. Some mics, interestingly, I've managed to plug in uh, camera microphones with an adapter into the uh, combo sockets on the back. And I've used a basic, I've used a microphone from, yeah, for a camera basically through it and it worked on maximum gain. And the gain was maybe a touch low for that, but it worked okay. And there's maybe not, not quite the, it was a fairly cheap camera mic but decent camera mic and it worked out quite a quite well for interviews and what have you and and recording stuff so as things go it's uh, worked out really well for me and it's a convenient unit uh, i think if you're doing the uh, the big camera rig thing and you wanted an in audio interface for mixing in you know for, for say you're doing the the full shoulder rig maybe with a digital slr or proper or pro camera and you wanted to, to hook that in this would work really well because you can hook in a couple of mics and mix it in on the spot and adjust it on the spot. And uh, as long as the mics were decent, when I use cheap mics, you get some hiss and some hum when they're not properly grounded or the ground setup is poor. But these, with the studio, we can hear my voice with the studio grant mic, it's, it's perfect. So that's the mixer face. And uh, I wanted to, I partly wanted to do this because I like what Michael does and he's worked really hard to do it. And it took him, he was delayed some years in making it. And now he's come out with a, a great device. Making it, he actually sells it now with a couple of little mics you can plug in here to do just on the spot interview. So it becomes like a large version of the, like the little Sony recorders where you hold in your hand. It's kind of about the same, probably a bit bigger actually. But you have to reuse your phone. And I'm just using a, a thing called ProMovie and it records it fine. And, uh, it's it, it's worked flawlessly with these Minova cables as well, although you can just use the standard camera connection kit and a uh, USB to micro USB cable. So that was my overview of the uh, Centrance Mixerface R4. 
And as always, I'm not usually don't usually do stuff on a pro audio gear because I'm not really a pro audio guy. But if you do think that if you do enjoy my videos, subscribe and uh, give me a thumbs up if you, and, and any comments you have, post them below. Including constructive criticism is also welcome. So anything good or bad, uh, or interesting, if you own one, what do you think? Also note my videos are primarily supported by people, my my uh, subscribers. And uh, if you might want to consider supporting me in any way, if you consider buying me a coffee, you might consider becoming a supporter for a bit. Do that. You can do that in the link you see on screen. And thanks to everyone who has helped out. And thanks to Mass Kobo for lending me some really excellent microphones for uh, you know, recording videos with. So thanks for watching and uh, I'll see you online.